In the previous video, we discussed a Cauchy integral theorem, which states that the integral over any closed contour of function holomorphic inside this contour vanishes. But not many interesting functions are holomorphic in complex analysis, so we need to contrive some kind of generalization of this result. And this generalization exists, and the minimal possible modification of the formula is called Cauchy's integral formula. And this is probably one of the central pillars of complex analysis. And it has a formidable power, and you'll soon learn it and see why. So the statement goes as follows. Suppose we have some simply connected region, and function f holomorphic inside this region. And then we have some closed contour, let's call it gamma, which is passed in the counterclockwise direction. Let's pick up some point A inside this contour, and then we have the following relation. For any point A, f of A is equal to 1 over 2 pi i, the integral over this closed contour gamma, f of z over z minus a dz. Now the peculiarity of this statement is as follows. You see that our function is holomorphic inside this contour. And for any point inside this contour, function f is defined by its values on the boundary of this contour. And now let's discuss a proof. And you'll be surprised how simple and elegant the proof is. Well, of course, let's have a closer look at our right-hand side. We have a closed contour integral, but obviously it doesn't vanish. Why? Because the Cauchy integral formula cannot be applied here, because we have this special point z equals a, where the integrand is ill-defined. But we'll still be able to use Cauchy integral theorem if we modify our contour. So let's add two linear segments to the contour, heading to point a, and complement them with their infinitesimal circle of radius epsilon round this point A. Let's denote the upper linear segment as L1 and the lower linear segment as L2. And now let's consider a new closed contour, let's call it gamma 1, which consists of contour gamma, linear segment L2, infinitesimal circle epsilon, and linear segment L1. Let us highlight this contour with a red color. And obviously, our integrand function f of z over z minus a is holomorphic inside this contour, because now point z equals a doesn't belong to it, right? It's outside. And that means that we can apply Cauchy integral theorem to this contour. And basically, we have the closed contour integral over contour gamma 1 of the same integrand to be equal to 0. But now, let's expand our gamma 1 contour into the combination of the segments. So we have the integral over closed contour gamma plus the integral over two linear segments, L2 and L1, which are infinitely close to each other but passed in opposite directions, and plus the integral along this infinitesimal circle epsilon passed in the clockwise direction. Now these two linear segments, well obviously uh, since they're infinitely close to each other and pass in opposite directions, they cancel each other, because the function assumes identical values on both of these segments. And this way we obtain that our initial closed contour integral over contour gamma is equal to minus the integral along this infinitesimal circle passed in the clockwise direction, epsilon. And this is a huge simplification, because these infinitesimal integrals are very easily computed, and the technique goes as follows. First, we introduce a parameterization of the any point on this infinitesimal circle. z equals a plus epsilon times e to i phi, where phi changes, say, from 0 to negative 2 pi as we move in the clockwise direction. Then we write down the differential dz as epsilon times e to i phi i d phi. Well, that's because the radius of the circle epsilon doesn't change and only angle changes. And then we have dz over z minus a equals i d phi, right? And now our closed contour integral is rewritten as the integral from 0 to minus 2 pi i d phi f of a plus epsilon times e to i phi. And then we need to take a limit epsilon tending to 0. 
And obviously we can discard epsilon term in the argument of our f function and end up with the integral of from 0 to negative 2 pi of i d phi multiplied by f of a, which basically yields us minus 2 pi i f of a. And this concludes the proof of our theorem. And now I'd like to discuss one more generalization of this result, because up to now we dealt with simply connected regions. But what if the region is more complicated, for example, doubly connected. A planar double kinetic region is basically some region with a hole. So let's draw it. So suppose we have a function holomorphic inside this doubly connected region, f. Let's pick up some point A inside this region and draw two contours, one with this point A inside and the one with this A outside. And let's call them gamma 1 and gamma 2. Both are passed in the counterclockwise direction. In this case, the Cauchy's integral formula formulated as follows. f of a for any point inside these two contours is equal to 1 over 2 pi i, the integral of the contour gamma 1, the outer contour, f over z over z minus a dz, minus 1 over 2 pi i, the integral over contour gamma 2, the inner contour, f of z, z minus a dz. The proof is as straightforward as in the previous case. So now we have two unconnected contours. And we need to devise some new contour, which will be a closed one. So what we do, now we add four linear segments, like this. And again, an infinitesimal circle around point A of radius epsilon. And now we consider a new closed contour, which is basically gamma 1 plus four linear segments. L1, L2, L3, and L4, minus contour gamma 2, minus that means that it's passed in the clockwise direction, and plus the infinitesimal circle, like this. Obviously, our integrand doesn't have singularities inside this closed contour, so again, Cauchy's integral theorem can be applied. So, the integral over this closed contour of the function f of z divided by z minus a vanishes. But on the other hand, this integral can be decomposed into the integral over contour gamma 1 minus the integral over contour gamma 2, because the direction is the opposite, plus the combination of the integrals along these linear segments. But again, like in the previous case, they vanish, because these four linear segments are infinitely close to each other and passed in opposite directions, so I won't even write them. And plus the integral along this infinitesimal circle, which is passed in the clockwise direction. And again, as before, we easily prove that the integral along this infinitesimal circle is equal to minus 2 pi i times f of a. And this basically completes our proof even for this more complicated case. And now, armed with these two results, we'll be able to explore the most important properties of holomorphic functions in the complex plane. But for this, wait for next two videos.